You can do nothing. Look there in John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would, re would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit at the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves does not wither. But in whatever he does, he prospers. I want to make sure that, that we have a clear understanding of what he is saying here because there's a, a, a popular um, belief that is being thrown out there by, by many people who are on TV that, um, that God has a desire that you just prosper financially. It's like, is that, is that really what, what he's talking about there? Is that, that really all that God is concerned with? It's not what he's talking about. It has really little to do with us. It has everything to do with, with God. Look in Isaiah chapter 55. Beginning in verse 11. God is speaking here of His Word, but we're, we're going to use that... Um, in another way as well. God says, So will my word which goes forth from my mouth, and it will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you. And in all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of the thorn bush and the cypress will come up. Instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. And it will be a memorial for the, to the Lord for an everlasting sign which will not be cut off. Here, here God is talking about two things. He's talking about His Word going forth without... It, it says, it will accomplish for the matter which I have sent it. And then He turns and He begins talking about... He's talking about prosperity here. And he's talking about the prosperity of God's people. But the end of that, he says, and it will be a memorial to the Lord. Not a memorial to you, not a memorial to, to our family or to our names. Where we're not out there building our name. We're not out there building our legacy. We're out there building the name of God. We're out there building the legacy of God. And God blesses us in a way so that it turns back on Him and His name is made greater, not our name. So our objective change from, from making ourselves known to making God known. Thirdly, this morning. Not only do we see a changed obedience and a changed objective, but we see a changed outcome. A changed outcome. Pick it up there, verse 4. He says, The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You know what Scripture tells us? There's only two outcomes. There's heaven and there's hell. That is a very real thing. And what he's saying here is, the wicked will not stand in judgment. He says they, will, they, will, they will be like chaff that this, the, the wind just kind of blows away. So we've already started to say the natural inclination of, of our heart is wickedness. It is sin. It is scoffing at God. That, that's kind of naturally who we are. So the only way to change our outcome Again, is the way of the righteous. It's 
Jesus. Look in Luke chapter 12. We, we looked at that, uh, that man in the parable that Jesus was telling that he had such a, a successful year. And he says, you know what, I got, I got so much stuff. He says, you know what, what, what am I going to do? I'll just tear down the barns that I have and I'll build bigger barns so I can store everything that I have. And then I'll kind of sit back, I'll take it easy, and I'll eat, I'll drink, I'll be merry. I'll just enjoy the rest of my life. He spent his entire life building up his own name, his own kingdom. But we didn't finish that. We pick it up there in Luke 12. Verse 20. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up for himself and is not rich towards God. See, we always have to remember, God always has the last word. This man thought he had it all figured out. He thought, you know what, I've, I've figured out the key to life. I've figured out the key to success, and now I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to enjoy. But God says, you forgot about one thing. You forgot about me. He says, while you spent your entire life focused on yourself, you forgot that this night your, your, your soul is required of you. And for this man, it was too late. His outcome was already defined. It was already established. But for those who know the way of righteousness, the, the, the outcome totally changes. Look in John chapter 3. Beginning verse 17. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. And you would say, wow, that is, that is great news. And I would say, that absolutely is great news. He did not send Jesus into the world to judge the world, but He, he sent Jesus into the world to save the world. However, we've got to keep reading. Verse 18. For he who believes in him is not judged. Who is the one who believes in him and is the one who, who receives him that we saw in, in John chapter 1. Not by the will of the flesh or the will of man, but by the will of God, the power of God. We, we, are, 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 we are changed because of our salvation in Christ. Here our outcome is changed. He says, the, the one who believes in me is not judged. He says, but he who does not believe has been judged already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment. That the light, and we know through John's Gospel, the, the light your, the light should be capitalized there in your Bible. If it's not, you just go ahead and get rid of that one and I'll get you a good one. Because um, he's talking about Jesus. The judgment, this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifest as having been wrought in God. What I want us to notice, he who believes in the only begotten Son of God is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. In other words, the outcome has already been determined. And the only way that we can change that outcome is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. One last parable I want us to look at. It. It's Matthew chapter 25. Beginning in verse 31. Jesus here speaking of that day of, of judgment, if you will, that day of outcome. 
to stick with our, our theme here. He says, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Part of the job of the, the shepherd is they were bringing all the, the animals in at night was to separate the sheep from the, from the goats. Sheep were useful to the shepherd. They provide wool or the, you know, the, the goats were not. And this is, this is a parable of the end times. So Jesus says you're either a sheep or you're a goat. Um, if, if you've ever, it's kind of a good analogy of the human nature. Um, if you've ever been around farm animals, sheep by naturally, they, by their natural inclination are followers. Um, what did Jesus come to the disciples and say? He says, follow me. What did Jesus declare himself to be the good shepherd? Um, so it is an indication of a, a follower of Christ. Shepherds follow. Goats? If you ever try to get a goat to do what you want a goat to do? Um, goats do what they want to do. Um, they're kind of stubborn. That describes us very well. Here Jesus says there, all the nations are gathered before Him. He will separate them one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Now, before we start thinking that this is some kind of moralistic, you know, idea that we can just do some good, righteous things and, and find ourselves being on the right hand of, of Christ, notice what the response is. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? Or feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or when do we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of the least of these brothers of mine, even to the least of them, you did it to me. Now what is going on there, it wasn't this idea of, of them going out and saying, Okay, we need to fulfill these religious tasks in order to, to gain the favor of God, and then somehow we will be invited in. No, there was this change of obedience. All of a sudden, they, they came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because they knew the way of the righteous. And God changed them and they just began naturally doing these things without even a real knowledge of, of, of that, what they were doing it for. But God says, I saw. He says, I, I, I saw how you reached out to that one when you thought no one was looking. I saw how you helped that person who had nothing to give you in return. You just did it out of, out of this changed heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that, that's what that change is. It's so foundational. It's so fundamental that we begin living in a way that is pleasing to God without really just saying, hey, I'm going to just start living in a way that pleases God. It just now becomes supernatural in our lives. But we've got to go on. Verse 41, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. See, there's only two outcomes here. Verse 42, he says, For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to the, one of the least of these, you did not do it unto me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 
I don't say that this morning by, by way of fear. I don't believe you can fear anyone, scare anyone in, into, the, into the kingdom of God. I say that by way of knowledge. We like to be people that know. Like just give, give, me all the, you know, give, give me all the details. Give me all the facts and let me make the decision. Well, Scripture's very clear. There's two outcomes. There's eternal damnation in a place called hell. And he who has not believed in the only begotten Son has been judged already. But the only way that we can change that outcome, because that, that's all of us, that, that's what every single one of us deserves. I, I don't want to sugarcoat it or, or make it sound like, well, you know, you know people who are, who are saved are, are better than no pe those people. God says clearly that's what we all deserve, because we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The only way that we can change that outcome in our lives is not by trying better, not by being better, not by doing better, not by coming to church, not by praying with your grandma when she's sick in the hospital. I'm not saying those aren't good things. But that doesn't change who we are. Only God can do that. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Why? Because Jesus is the only one who can change us into something we are not. Do you know that change this morning? Do you know that God has the power to take you exactly as you are with all your faults? With all those, the, the things in your life that, you know, that you struggle with, with your addictions, with your bad attitude, with your temper, every mistake that you've ever made, every mistake that you ever will, God says, I, I can change all that. He does it in an instant. Because of who He is. And how he operates. Christian, this morning, do you, do you know the power of God still working in your life? Because I think quite often, sometimes, we, we come to a, a saving faith of Christ, and then we allow there to be this disconnect. And, and we look at God, and, and we, sometimes maybe we think, well, the problem is with God, and, but the problem is we're the ones who have moved. We're the ones who have stopped striving See, our, our relationship with Christ doesn't stop when we're saved. It just begins. And here we have this all-powerful, almighty God who says, Come and know me more. Open up the pages of, of my scriptures and, and find out who I am. Find out what I can do. He says, I, I can do that in your life. I'm going to close this in prayer here in a minute. And after I do, we're going to have a, a song where we stand. We call it our invitation. I believe as God's Word goes out, He's sending it out for a purpose. We read that in Isaiah 55. I believe God is inviting us this morning. He knows the direction of your life. He, he knows the path that you're on, and God is saying, come, ha, ha, have a, a changed obedience this morning. God knows the, the things that you are building towards, and He says, come and, and have a, a changed objective. And this morning, God knows if, if you are on your way to heaven or if you are on your way to hell. And He says, come, have a changed outcome. Not, not in your own strength, not in your own power, because we, we can't do that. But there comes a time in our life when we have to allow God to be God. Maybe this morning we need to do that.
when we stand and sing, I'm going to invite you to, to come forward. If this morning you need to say, yes, Aaron, I, I need that changed outcome. I, I, I need to, to come to Jesus and know that he is the, the only way, the only, the only way that this thing's going to happen. Because I've been trying to do it myself. And I realize this morning, I can't do it without him. God says, come, let, let me do what I do. Let me be God. Maybe we're here this morning and we've, we've taken care of, of salvation. We know that, but the other thing I didn't mention about sheep, sheep have a tendency to wander. Not stubbornly, but just aimlessly. Yeah. Sheep just kind of, oh, look. We're just going to kind of butterfly. Let's go follow this a while. And the next thing you know, you've, you've almost lost sight of the shepherd. Maybe this morning you know that you are on his right hand. You know you are a sheep. You know you're, you are on your way to eternal life. Not because of who you are, but because of what Jesus has done. And, and maybe you've just kind of wandered a little bit. God says, let me do what I do. We stand again. If that's you this morning, I invite you to just come and pray and say, Lord, bring me back. Plant me firmly by the streams of water so that I can glorify the name of Christ and I can live in a way that is pleasing to you. Because our God. He deserves nothing less. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, Lord, I, I know that it is difficult for us to hear um, that we are not good people. Um, at least not according to your definition of good. Lord, just because it's difficult to hear doesn't mean that it's not true. Lord, I pray that this morning we would all recognize our, our need for salvation and thus our, our need for a Savior. And that Savior is not ourselves. But is the only Son of God who laid down His life died on a cross taking our punishment so that we might know Him and have eternal life through Him. Lord, I pray that Lord, if we would just look at our lives and say, yes, we, we need change. Lord, I pray that we would stop striving to do it ourselves and we would come to You. Lord, I pray that you would just use this invitation to accomplish what you desire. Lord, may we come and may we know the way of the righteous. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.